everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Heather Majors. Today we're going to talk about how to use the Outlook web app to delegate your calendar and your email. Typically, when somebody hears about Outlook delegation, they think of an executive assistant who is sending out calendar invites or managing email on behalf of their principal. But anybody can use this feature. For example, I recently used it so that my trusted coworker could help me set up calendar invites while I was on vacation for a live session that I was teaching when I returned. Setting up delegation in the web app is slightly different than how you would do it on the desktop app. We're, so we're gonna walk through how to delegate the inbox, how to delegate folders, and how to delegate a calendar. So let's jump on the computer and see how it's done. I have navigated to the Outlook web app so that we can begin by delegating just the inbox. To do that, right click on the word inbox and select permissions. A dialog box appears that lets you know you'll be granting permissions for just the inbox folder. Click on the plus sign to add permissions. When I click in this field to add a name, Outlook is going to suggest some contacts. The person that I want to delegate happens to be the top one on the list, so I'm going to select Jessica and click Add. The delegate's name is in the permission box, but her permission level is set to None. Click the drop down next to Permission Level and choose the one that best fits your scenario. In my case, I would like my coworker to have full access to my inbox while I'm on vacation. So I will click Editor. And now my delegate has full access to read, write, and delete items for my inbox. And now I can click OK. This has granted Jessica access to only my inbox. If I need to grant her access to additional folders, I will right click on the word folder, and select permissions again. A new floating dialog box appears and this one says permissions for the Heather M folder. This lets you know that you're granting permission to more than just the inbox. And we'll go through the same steps. We'll click the plus sign, select Jessica's name from the suggested contacts, and click add. The folders can have a different permission level than the inbox. So for example, in this case, I want my delegate to only be a reviewer for the folders. And then you can click OK. The next thing that I need to do is grant my coworker access to my calendar. Go to the left-hand navigation bar and click on Calendar. Navigate to the right-hand side of the screen and click on the Share button. If this is the first time you've come to the Sharing and Permissions dialog box, the only thing you should see is people in my organization can view when I am busy. If I want to grant somebody permission to manage my calendar for me, I can type their name in the Share box. I'm going to select Jessica again and you can see that she can view all the details of my calendar. If I want her to be my delegate, I will click the drop down box and select delegate. After you choose delegate, an additional option will appear and it lets you choose whether or not they should be able to view private events. This lets the owner of a calendar create an event and mark it as private. The delegate will see that the time is blocked off, but they won't necessarily see the details. For example, you might have a doctor's appointment that you want to put on your calendar but you don't want the delegate to see the details of it. To complete the process, all I have to do is click Share. A delegate section appears in the Sharing and Permissions window, and you can see that delegates can view, create, modify, and delete items. They can also create meeting requests and respond to meeting invitations on your behalf. Close the Sharing and Permissions dialog box, and now you have completed setting up delegate access for your calendar, your inbox, and your folders in the Outlook web application. Now let's switch focus and look at how to send email on behalf of someone and manage a delegated calendar. To do this, I have logged in as Jessica in the Outlook web app. First, let's take a look at how to send a message on behalf of somebody who delegated their inbox to you. Click on New Message. 
The first thing that you're going to need to do is unhide the from field. Click on the three dots and click on show from. Now you can see that by default, all emails are coming from Jessica. But in this scenario, that is not what I need. I need the email to come from Heather. Click on the from field, click on other email addresses, and either type in the email address or select it from suggested contacts. In this case, the email address I need is already in the suggested contacts. Now the email is coming from the Heather account. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to send the email to Jessica so that you can see what it looks like when it arrives. Now we have an email that appears to have come from Heather. When you open it, you can see that it was sent by Jessica on behalf of Heather. The next thing I want to show you is how to add the delegated inbox to your Outlook navigation menu. To do that, I will right click on folders and I will select add a shared folder. You will type in the email or select it from suggested contents and click on add. You will see the name of the delegated folder added to the navigation menu and you can click on load more folders to see the inbox. The next thing you need to do is set up the calendar so that you can send and receive invites on the behalf of the delegated calendar. Click on the calendar icon to see your own calendar. To add the delegated calendar, click on add calendar. Click on add from directory and then type in the email address for the delegated calendar. Once you find the name, you can click add and then close the dialog box. And now you can see the calendar events that have been delegated to you. Now let's take a look at how to create an event for the delegated calendar. Click on new event. By default, Outlook is going to select your calendar. You'll need to click on the drop down next to the word calendar and select the name of the delegated calendar. And then fill it out as you normally would and save it. And there you go. Now you know how to use the Outlook web app to set up a calendar delegation or email delegation. On the flip side of the coin, you know how to be the one who sends the email on behalf of somebody else or manage their calendar for them while they're gone. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please press the like button so that this video can spread to more people and we can learn together. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.